information from them. And today's video is going to be about don't become a cash cow whilst getting divorced. Um, I know a lot about this subject because I've been through three divorces myself and so therefore I've acquired a lot of information. Um, I've talked to many, many other people as well with regard to going through the divorce situation and it's a common occurrence. You are the cash cow whilst going through a divorce. So I've got a couple of stories to tell you how I became a cash cow for a divorce through the solicitors. So listen to the stories and learn from what other people have to say. Don't become a cash cow during divorce. Divorce is stressful enough as it is. If you take note of some of these stories, then you will avoid becoming a cash cow. Okay, the, the first story I'm gonna tell you is, this was during my second divorce. I've been through the first divorce, very costly divorce, and I learned many things from that divorce with regard to how to avoid paying such exorbitant solicitor bills. So during my second divorce, I didn't want to get divorced, but it was forced upon me. My ex-wife wanted a divorce, so yes, we had to go through that. So I thought I could deal with a lot of the divorce myself, and I did, to a certain extent, deal with a lot of divorce myself. But I contacted a solicitor to get her advice that if I came to a situation where I couldn't find the answers to it, that she would give me legal guidance. And she sounded very friendly and she said, yeah, why, why pay me for doing a lot of the work that you can do yourself? She said, I totally agree with you. So she said, yeah, if I can help you in any way, just pay for the services and I'll give you the advice that you require on an hourly basis. So I was quite happy with that. So all the, the letters to and from, from my ex-wife or my ex-wife's solicitors, I dealt with that. So the solicitors didn't have to write any letters. It was always me that, that dealt with the writing of the letters because a letter from a solicitor at the time was 30 pounds per letter. So that's expensive. So anyway, um, what happened was I was going to Thailand on holiday booked all my flights, I was going there for two weeks. I got a letter from the courts asking me to appear next week. So within seven days, I had to appear at court with regard to my divorce proceedings. So therefore, I couldn't appear on that day because I was on holiday. So I rang my solicitor and said to her that due to me being on holiday, I wouldn't be able to attend the court. And she said on the phone, she said, oh, well, you need to attend, you need to attend. She said, if you don't attend court on that day, she said, they'll find in favour of your ex-wife and you'll come back from holiday and all your belongings will be on the street. She said, it'll be in black plastic bags. So she made a point of that. I needed to be at court for some representation. And I asked her how much it would cost for her to explain to the courts why I couldn't be there. And she said, oh, I'll do that for 500 pounds. And she said, the alternative is, if you don't go to court, I'll get represented by your solicitor. She said, you'll come back from your holidays and you, you're kicked out of the house. There's nothing you can do about it. I said, oh, 500 pounds, just to say that I, I can't appear because I'm on holiday. I said, let me think about that. Let me think about that, please. So I rang the courts up, rang the courts and spoke to the the appropriate person in the office to say that I would not be able to attend the court next week because I was away on holiday. And the lady at the other side, she said, oh, well, have you got proof to say that you're on holiday and you can't attend? I said, yes, I've got my flight tickets, my holiday confirmation. I said, I've got everything to show that I can't attend on that day. She said, okay, then she said, we'll cancel that day. She said, and it'll get um, rescheduled for a day that you can attend. And I said, and nothing's going to happen? She said, well, if you can't come to the court, she said, well, she said, we can't do anything about it. So she said, as long as you got the proof to say that you couldn't attend, she said, it's £35 to reschedule the day at court. £35, I said, she said, yes. So I, was, I went down to the courts the very same day, spoke to the same lady, filled the form in, showed her the information why I couldn't go to court, and 
then she explained to me, she said, yeah. She said, we'll reschedule it. She said, it'll get adjourned on that day. She said, and it'll get rescheduled to a time when you can attend the court. So she said, 35 pounds. So I paid the, the lady at the courts 35 pounds. And then I went straight down to my solicitors, who I asked for advice. And she said she would kindly give me advice on an hourly basis. And I went into her office and she said, oh, she said, have you come to book me to attend a court for you to tell you that you can't attend? And I said, so there's no other way around it. If you're not represented at court, they'll find in your ex-wife's favour. So I can't just ring the courts up and ask them to adjourn it because I'm on holiday and I've got proof to say that I'm on holiday. Oh, well, she said, yeah, you could do it that way. So well, why didn't you suggest that to me instead of telling me it'll cost me £500? I said, I've just been to the courts and done such thing. And they've told me £35 will get adjourned and nothing will happen. So I said, thank you very much for your services and your honest advice. I said, I will not be using your services anymore. And walked out of the office. You are the cash cow for any solicitors. They will do such things to, because whilst they've got you under their services, they will milk you for every single penny they can get. They cause the arguments between you and your partner. Our divorce started off very amicably, but then deteriorated into a fighting, a slagging match because of solicitors. They make money out of you fighting. Letters, disagreements, going to court, disagreement at court, getting adjourned to go through the process again. It drags on and drags on and drags on. Please, please don't let this happen to you. Sort it out with your wife, if you can, or your partner, and hopefully don't do the same mistakes as what I did. Do not be the cash cow for your solicitor. Deal with it yourself as much as you can. If it gets complicated, then you hire a solicitor to give you guidance and advice. You don't need to have solicitors, barristers, you can do a lot of the work yourself. Um, watch my other video. I actually told my barrister and my solicitors to stay in the office and I sorted my divorce out myself without the barrister or the solicitor because I was so disappointed in what they were doing for me or supposedly doing for me. It cost me a fortune, but I've learned and hopefully I'm here to try and pass on my advice to others with regard to getting divorced. It's a stressful, painful time anyway, but it can be financially ruining getting divorced as it was for me. So I hope this information has been advice. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't like it, give it a thumbs down. If you want any guidance and advice, and I can only give you my personal guidance and advice because I'm a, a normal everyday person who's been through this situation and learned at his own cost, the seriousness of getting divorced and how much solicitors and lawyers will rip you off for. I've talked to many, many people who've been divorced and similar stories to my own. So I've gathered lots and lots of advice and information and can pass on this to you. So if you want, contact me below on my email address and I'll answer any questions that you may have and give you my advice for what it's worth. Start a new life today. Move forward from the situation that you're in because there is light at the end of the tunnel. So until the next video, bye for now.